we understand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And next up is Debbie, if you are able to unmute and share uh, your company page and what brings you here today. Uh, well, I joined the board and for a profession, a professional association. And so I'm just trying to fix up the company from where it is now to take it to the next level. So I'm trying to see if there's anything how to make it better. You're in the right place. Thank you very much. So Stacy and then Susan. Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy Hellstrom, and I am new to having my own company, uh, Talent Impact Advisory. I uh, focus on elevating people and accelerating business um, through high-performing teams work and coaching. Thank you very much. And Susan, and then our host with the most, Brenda. Hi, Susan Moore. I own Managed Healthcare Resources, which is a company that assists organizations naturally, nationally, uh, managed care organizations to become accredited by the national accrediting body. And I also survey for that company. I'm located in Michigan, um, but I'm out in San Diego right now for a coaching conference uh, with Pinnacle Global Network. It's for uh, started by Allison Maslin and she wrote Scale or Fail and I wanted to scale my business. And so there's levels of half a million to a million uh, for income and a million and over. Um, and you get coaching twice a month by a mentor who is um, very skilled, has built and sold their businesses for multi-million dollars. And so it's um, a great, great organization. It's pricey, but it will really help you jumpstart your business if that's what you're doing and help you get a laser focus and identify your ideal customer avatar. So a little plug for that. If you're interested, uh, there's going to be a February 1st next conference for people who are who want to get more information about it and um you can let me know and I can put you in touch. Thank you very much. And Brenda, are you in a good place to take charge of, of the cat herding and, and corral us back into order? Thank you so much, Christopher. And by the way, guys, can you hear me? Is that better now? Have you adjusted? That is, that is a little better. better yeah. I just realized I'm like, my microphone's nowhere near my head like it normally is. So you probably hear a difference in audio quality if you tend to follow me and also video quality. So this is a little bit of a compare contrast type of an exercise. And there's so many lessons so far in, in this call uh, that I've learned and hope to pass on to you. But Christopher's company is called Calm Clear Communications. And I have to say, if you ever have the opportunity to hire Christopher, you definitely should. Because when I came into the call today, I had uh, my daughter was not feeling well at school. I had to go pick her up from school. She's hanging out next to me on the couch right now. She's doing good, but we're hanging out together. But when I got on the call, I I needed to deliver this call. It was so last minute to be able to cancel it. I'm like, I needed to deliver it, but I said, I'll probably have someone on there that I can trust. And I came on and the first person I saw was Christopher. And if you believe in, I don't know what it is, what kind of a spiritual guidance you have in your life, God, or whatever it is, you know, sometimes it's like the universe, I need help. And then the universe delivered Christopher Johnson into my Zoom call this morning. <laughs> And when he came in, I said, Christopher, I kind of explained what was going on. I said, do you mind taking the lead on this? And the great thing is he's been on so many Zoom calls with me before that he knows exactly the flow of, of what we're looking for. And I just gave him instructions. I said, can you lead the introductions for folks? As soon as I get situated and back at home, I'll jump on. And he did it. So Christopher, again, just to reiterate, the name of your company is Calm Clear Communications. I think you epitomize the name of your company today. I owe you. I, I feel like I owe you so much, but I really do appreciate you being here and helping us with the introductions today, sir. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. All right, great. So we're here today to talk about company pages on LinkedIn, and I have started the live stream. It's popped up onto YouTube. Eventually, this will be converted to a podcast later. Now, somebody might say, well, why would you do this one on a podcast? It was a little bit jumbled at the beginning. It was a little bit different and out of the ordinary. I think this is important because I want to show you that I'm a real person 
And sometimes we have hiccups in our, our situations that we need to work through. And I'm a true professional. Now, if it was a dire emergency, I would have canceled the call and sent out an email to all of you. We were in a scenario where I'm like, I could probably start it a few minutes late. So I just needed to make the best decision on what to do next to make sure this was a good experience for all of you. And I'm sharing this with you because I like to pull the curtain back. Um, one of my favorite movies growing up, by the way, was The Wizard of Oz. And I love the part of the movie where she finally gets to Oz and it's the big man behind the curtain and Toto, the dog, is pulling the curtain away. And she's like, oh, my gosh, it's it's not The Wizard of Oz. It's this guy in a booth and he's doing all the stuff. I like to pull the curtain back on what I'm doing and show you the behind the scenes. I also like to show you that. I'm a real person and I don't make mistakes. I have learning experiences and any opportunity I can to share the learning experience with you and walk you through what I did, what I was feeling, what I would do to prevent it from happening again, or what I would do when I know it's going to happen again. I will always do that for you. And a little bit of a sidetrack off of company pages, but if you do have your own company page, you are probably self-employed or you are in a management type of a role or function. So you're going to have to do this too. You're wearing all the hats, you know, running the company and running the show and running those Zooms and the webinar. So there's a tie-in from there. With all of that said, what I'd like to do next is open the floor to any of you who may have questions about your LinkedIn company page. And the way we're going to facilitate the Q&A process today is I want you to use the Zoom function, which is raise hand. So if you go under reactions, if you don't see reactions, click on the more with the three dots, and then you'll see reactions inside there. And at the very bottom of that menu, you'll see the raise hand, and it brings up that little gold orange looking it reminds me of like a costume, thing, but it'll raise it up and that will keep that up until you pull it down. And I see Sue has already raised her hand. So we'll go to Sue first. And if you have any questions about your company page, I want you to raise hand. I'll call on you. And if there's something that you want to specifically see or talk about on your company page, I'll also make you a co-host so that you can share your screen and we can look at that together. Okay, so that's how we'll work. So don't be shy. You're here to learn about company pages. And even if you don't have a specific question about your company page, maybe you just want some feedback on your page. I'm here for you today. So raise your hand and say, can you give me any feedback? Can you give me any pointers? What are you seeing? Now, I am like a mechanic, guys, uh, and I'm not an auto mechanic, but I love this analogy. Like if you pull up to a garage and your car is making funny noises, even before the mechanic pops the hood and looks underneath it, he or she will know it's the belt or it's this or it's that or whatever. I can do that with company pages. As soon as we pull up your company page, I'm going to see things that are going to help you to just tweak and dial things up. And if there's nothing that's coming up there, then what we can do is we can go into your page analytics and I can help to do some diagnostics in there as well. So use this time. Don't be shy. Raise your hand. Even if you've asked a lot of questions, raise your hand again and we'll go to you. All right. With that said, Sue, how can we help you today? Well, you may or may not be able to help me because apparently I learned from last night from Michelle Raymond in the near Johnson. Johnson. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Who just produced and launched the second edition of their book, yes. uh, Company Pages Business Gold. And by the way, if you want it in paperback, Michelle says DM her because right now Amazon's selling you the old copy and they haven't got the new copy out yet. So Michelle's collecting a list and Lanier's collecting a list, but they announced that there are changes, but they also, um, Lanier was saying, and of course, in the last week, since they pushed it out to Amazon, something new happened. And I saw it last night. I admit when I was at the symphony and in intermission scrolling through, I couldn't find the post today, but it was something like you can now do featured posts for your company page. So Brenda, I may have brought up something mm -hmm. you haven't seen yet, but I was just curious if anybody else heard anything or saw anything new, because apparently, finally, Brenda, to you and Michelle, who I learned about company pages from two years ago, Finally, LinkedIn seems to be paying attention to the fact that this is real information that people should be getting access to because we're all using them. So that's my sort of question comment and yeah. may go nowhere. No, that's great. And um, let's let's go take a look. Let's go walk on it a uh, journey together to LinkedIn. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to navigate over to LinkedIn right now and go to my company page. What you're describing to me does not surprise me at all. What I'm noticing LinkedIn doing lately is they are making a lot of the changes 
on personal profiles coming over to company pages and some of the things from company pages are moving over to personal profiles. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Now you said they were giving you a way to feature posts on your company page. So the interesting and kind of ironic thing about LinkedIn, and by the way, I love LinkedIn as a platform, but the interesting and ironic thing is they really do a really bad job of communicating out feature updates. And I think it's it's by design because what happens is when LinkedIn is is rolling out new features, they do it in waves. And in and amongst the LinkedIn training and coaching community, those of us who are independent consultants helping people use LinkedIn, we share notes, we talk amongst each other, and we are like, we observe things and we share what's happening. And we've been able to figure out that that changes roll out in five waves. So it seems to what happens is LinkedIn rolls it out in the first wave, it goes out to a portion of the LinkedIn universe. And we don't know what their methodology is. And I remember back when I worked in corporate in the research realm, you would talk about if you wanted to get a statistically valid sample, you had to have a statistically valid group. It had to be representative and it had to be I think I remember like 40 people or more, but it seemed like a really low number. And I was always like, we want to get 100 or more. But you had to have a statistically valid sample and it had to be a subset that was representative of the total universe. Um, I don't know what LinkedIn does. I would I would tend to believe that they are following re re research best practices when they're rolling out changes. But my understanding is they roll out in the first wave and then they wait and they hear feedback. They see, are people contacting LinkedIn help? Are people talking about it? Are they complaining about it? Are they tweeting about it, what's happening, and then they might make some tweaks and modifications and then roll it out to more people in wave two. Now, sometimes they roll it out to wave one and it's not working the way that they they wanted it to so that they won't, don't roll it out to wave two. They abandon it altogether. Other times it makes it all the way out to wave five and wave five is everyone on LinkedIn gets the change. And sometimes at that point, they do make an announcement, but typically they don't, I'll be honest with you. So you might get lucky and hear about changes, but they do a really ba bad job. So if you're saying LinkedIn is giving us a way to feature posts, my first inclination is how do I feature posts on my personal profile? I click on the three dots and then I would see an option that would say feature post. Now I'm not seeing it in this View. Okay, so I don't think I have it yet. Um, this might not be the way it's rolling out, but this would be based on how I know LinkedIn to work. This would be where I would look for it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on view as member just to see is anything looking different in here. Now, this is the member view. I would think that it would be under posts. I'm not seeing anything inside here. I'm also going to look under the about section because I think about the about section is kind of like the page description, and that's where we would see featured posts from our personal profile. And I'm just saying, is there anything in here that's that's showing? Sometimes you'll see a box that will say add featured or the new feature that's rolling out. Now, I'm not seeing anything inside of here. I'm going to pause on that right now, and I'm going to ask, Sue, are you seeing it on your company page? I'm not, but I noticed just after I talked to you, before I talked to you, I I clicked, I uh, clicked on Ife, Ife, I think her company page. And the first view that came up actually has something that looks like featured called page Ooh. posts. Okay. Um, and then the second time I clicked on her profile, I went to the, her company page. It went to the regular scroll down, scroll down. This was scroll down and then scroll across. Okay. Was that Ife, Ife's company it was page? Her company page. Yes. Let okay. me put the link in. It's, um, and Ife, am I saying your name correctly? And could you unmute yourself? Is she still on? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Um, am I may you, please correct me if I've said your name incorrectly. It's Ife. I think you were about ninety five percent there. <laughs> okay. I was like, I, I I can't remember it at the beginning, but Ife, and I know I had the name um, pronunciation here. Okay. So, do you have this feature on your company page where you can feature posts? You know, I have. I saw earlier in the week some people talking about this, um, and I haven't noticed it. But I would be really intrigued now if you go in and it appears. I would be delighted to have this feature. Would Would you be open to me making you a co-host and you sharing your screen, and we could look at your company page? Would that be okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to stop the share from my view, and I'll let. 
um, Eva do from her view and then pull that up. The, the great thing about these live calls is we have the opportunity to look at these things together. And Sue, I appreciate you bringing this up to me. No, I hadn't heard about it yet, but um, I'm so used to LinkedIn always rolling out changes and new features and things. And Kevin D. Turner does a really good job of broadcasting out changes on the platform, including company page feature changes and things like that too. And I think to date, there's been more than 150 feature changes on LinkedIn. I mean, that's insane. It's November and we're not even done yet. And this is another one. So this, I don't know if there's 151 or 160 at this point. Um, are you able to share your screen, Eva? Yeah, actually, I've just checked it. I'm not seeing it. Not seeing it. Okay. Thank you for, yeah. for verifying that. All right. And if anybody else who's on the call is seeing the ability to feature posts on the company page, unmute yourself, let me know, and I will make you a co-host so that you can share your page. But Sue, it, it sounds like this is pretty early on. Now, was Michelle J. Raymond or Linair Johnson, did they say that they had the feature on their company pages or they just heard about it? No, they literally had just heard about it just, you know, okay. the couple, day before the launch thing last night. So, okay. But someone was posting about it because, as I said, I was flicking through LinkedIn on my phone at the Symphony and never, never looked at exactly who posted and thought, oh, good, company pages yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I will put in this company page group that you have, Brenda. I'll put in a um, screenshot, a picture of what I'm seeing on Aoife's, um profile. Um, just so can pe people can see what I'm seeing that looks like. You know what? Could, could you share... What, what is it her sure. business page? Yeah, it's her business page here. Oh, you, let me I, go ahead. I'll stop my share and I'll come back and I'll talk about the group after we're done here. But go okay, ahead and do a screen share. Her, you need to give oh, us sorry. permission. Thank Co -host. you. Co-host. Okay, there you go. Right. We do a lot of things on the fly here, here in our VIP office hours. By the way, it's nice to see all of you guys here today, Dean and Linda and Mindy and Stacy. Thank you guys for being here. Okay, okay so what do you so see? When I scroll down, Look what I see suddenly, page posts. That's, like that's not a feature, though. Feature. That's just a new way of they're laying things out in there. Okay, but if you just yeah. go to the profile directly the next time, like if I look at something, then it comes back to you don't get it this view. So anyway, that's all I could see. Oh, uh, okay. You're not seeing it from that view. Yeah, no. no, if you were to click on posts, so right above where it says home about posts, jobs, people, if you click yeah. on posts, yeah, you'll go it, to like the page activity feed and it won't yeah. show that view. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I saw. Okay. Well, thank you. And, sure. and you know, it's good to know it's coming. I'll be on the lookout for it. It's challenging when you're training people for a living on how to use LinkedIn more effectively. And then LinkedIn's like throwing out changes all the time. It's like, okay, come on, LinkedIn. But I've I've just learned that's that's what it is. And I would imagine in part it's kind of like being a doctor or being a you know person who's diagnosing uh errors that are occurring on cars or with computers or things like that. Um, you don't know what's going to come up next, right? And there are a few things that are coming up all the time. All right. But on that note, I do want to point out to all of you that LinkedIn, like LinkedIn, the mothership has created this page, calling it page administrators group. It is a private listed group. I believe what that means is listed. Um, you can, I'm trying to think about this. I always get this a little bit confused. Private and unlisted means it wouldn't be on the group directory. I'm getting confused on which is which, but at any rate, I'm giving you the name of the group. So I think if you go, if you're not in the group yet, can you go visit the page? Does it say request to join or do you have to, do you get in right away? And I, I one of it is, is that feature, whether it's private or listed. The other is, does it show on your profile? So, um, and, and is the public, the are the posts public to the group members or can other people see the posting activity? At any rate, inside the group, um, it is a group, so anyone can post. And my understanding is we don't have to wait for the group administrators to approve our posts. We can put any type of post in there. But you do have people like um, Tian Tran, who is a product manager for company pages at LinkedIn, who are a part of the group. And obviously, you know, she is helping to run the group. So she has a pinned post. And, you know, she will occasionally put new pinned posts at the top. This one was from a week ago. And then as you scroll through, you'll see people like Catalina who are posting questions for 
the group and they'll recommend when you do a post, they'll say, if this is a question, use hashtag question for a group. And Catalina had posted um, just yesterday saying, did LinkedIn change the way external links certain posts are displayed. I'm not going to read through everything, but that's just an example. Sometimes the questions are specific to company pages. Other times the questions are just LinkedIn um, pages in general. So, you know, look through and you can see some of the posts that are inside here. If you ever see weird things happening with your company page and you can't figure out why, I would do two things if I were you. I would post inside the group. And probably reach out to me first, to be honest with you, but <laughs> just me. Um, reach out to me and post inside the group. Do both of them. Uh, but I'm one of there's a there's a group of us on LinkedIn who tend to specialize in using company pages and the company page features. Michelle J. Raymond, Linear Johnson. Um, there's a couple others as well. They're not coming to top of mind for me, but this is a really great group to post within because it's a destination that's focused on pages. And then there's also certain people on the platform. And I, if I were you, I would make friends with Michelle J. Raymond and Lanier Johnson and follow them and connect with them. Tell them that I sent you. Tell them that we were talking about them inside the group here. And they, like me, are very free and willing with the information that they are sharing with you on the platform. So if you're ever running into hiccups or you're seeing new features, you know, don't be shy about posting them inside the group and giving that a try. Okay, you can join right away. So that means... Oh, I always get confused on things. I think it might even be in the group settings how they do things, but some groups will make you like the wait to approve you inside the group. But I think private means they can only you can only see um, the group directory if you have access to it. I don't remember. At any rate, not relevant to the purposes of today's phone call. We're going to move along here, and I want to see if anyone else has any questions about their company page. Alternatively, would anyone like a once over and get some pointers on their company page? Um, I did have a friend that I invited to the call. She doesn't have a company page yet. And I said, if you come on the call, I'll help you walk you through the process of setting up a company page. So I'll, alternatively, I'll offer that out to anyone on the call as well. If you do not yet have a company page and you'd like some instructions on setting it up, um, raise your hand and we can do that on the call today. The only thing we really need is a logo and you can always come back later and change that. Stacy, are you kind of hesitantly raising your hand? All yeah. right, Stacey. So what's going on? Do you not yet have a company page? I have the page, but it's really just the, just a shell. It's shell? a placeholder. Okay. Do you, would you feel comfortable? I'm going to make you a co-host. Would you feel comfortable sharing your screen and I can provide yeah. you some guidance and we can ask others yeah. for help as well. Is that okay? All right. Yeah. So when you're, when you're able to do so inside zoom, you'll click on the green share screen button at the bottom, and then you'll share your desktop so that we can see your LinkedIn and we'll just take a peek and see where Stacy's at right now. And we'll give her some pointers on, on helping her with her page. And while we are waiting for Stacy to do that, I want to encourage you all to go into chat and tell me how many page invitation credits do you have remaining right now? I'm going to look at mine as well, and I'm going to tell you how many I have. I've really been trying to, to use these page invitation credits to grow my page, and I've fallen a little bit behind, but um, I'm trying to, every time I visit the page to invite 10 more people. Um, I'm getting an error message. I have 85 out of 250 available, so I'm going to put my number in chat. And I want to encourage you all to look up your number as well. So I'm going to do 85 out of 250 invitation credits. I'm going to put mine in. And I want to tell all of you to do that as well. Okay. So Stacy, this is your company, Talent Impact yeah. Advisory. Okay. Wonderful. So first thing we're going to do is let's just look and see what you have in here. So in the left navigation, um, in the menu, feed activity analytics edit page, I want you to click on edit page. And how long ago did you set this up? I think about a month ago um, okay. and just haven't had time to get back to it. No problem at all. Okay, so let's go in the top navigation. We're going to go top to bottom. So under header, I want you to click on page info. Okay, and a couple things inside of here, just to be aware of, you've got your logo, which has been uploaded. And the first thing I'm noticing is the logo. You probably have some words that are underneath whatever that symbol is in the middle. What I would recommend, Stacy, is that even though it says logo, I really want you to use just an avatar in here. So if I were you, I would use 
the 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 sage green background and whatever that symbol is at the top make that symbol larger and just have that okay. fill the full space take all of the words out of there because we can't read them anyway okay. and to be honest that avatar always follows your company page around in your post and it's at the top of the page so you really don't need the name in the logo anyway so okay. i would make that change and do you have the ability to make changes on your logo yourself in canva or something else yes yeah okay Okay, good. So then you've got the name of the company, the LinkedIn URL, the tagline, and the tagline is typically like that one liner describing your business. It's similar to a profile headline. The difference is that it doesn't follow the page around when the page posts, but, and it also is only 120 characters, whereas our personal LinkedIn headline is 220. Now you're saying, you're saying elevating people and accelerating business. If I could give one suggestion for improvement upon that, Let's assume that I am not familiar with the name of your company, Talent Impact Advisory. So what do you do? Tell me what you do, just conversationally, Stacey. What do you do? So um, I consult with leaders and businesses um, to help them elevate the performance of their talent um, and accelerate business outcomes. So focusing on org effectiveness spaces mm -hmm. like high-performing teams, um, coaching individuals and groups, um, instructional design. Oh, I think Stacy froze. Oh, okay. there we go. Okay. Yeah. It just froze on my computer. I think for a second, sorry about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. here's what I would have you do. Um, um, Stacy is let's assume somebody lands on your page. They don't know what your business is. I want you to treat the tagline like a one line description of your business and you've only got 120 characters to do so. So I know, you know, the inclination is let's use the tagline I have on my website, on my homepage or everything else. But um, right. that that tagline on your website sits in conjunction with everything else. Let's just assume got somebody it. comes here. And I, I, I like that, that we're, we're trying to be consistent with brand messaging. But I see, feel like sometimes people try to get too clever and allude to things. <laughs> and what you're trying to do is really keep the right people on the page and get them reading down. Sense. So what yep. if you were just, just instead to say, elevating people and accelerating business, um, serving consultants and business owners. Like even just adding uh, that little bit, okay. it yep. kind of says, okay, I'm a business owner. That speaks to me. I'm going to keep reading. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, it sure does. Thank you. Okay. And then underneath page info, let's click on buttons. And I'm just going to keep going here and we might do the rest of the call on Stacy's page unless we get any other questions, but I'm just going to keep going here. Okay, so you've got the custom button um, enabled and the button name right now is visit website. So click on that drop down where it says visit website. You're going to see you have a couple different options here. You can use contact us, learn more, register, sign up, visit portfolio, visit store. So the default is visit website. And LinkedIn actually encourages you to use something other than the visit website. Um, okay. What I want to think about, Stacy, is do you have do you have an email list that people can join or a contact us page on your website? I do have a contact us. Okay. So what I would do is change the visit website to contact us and then um, put in the URL for your contact us page. So is it just talent impact advisory slash contact or whatever that link is you may want to come back to this later and do yeah, that I'll come back. But, okay and then and then let's see what else in this section let's go under oh look home featured oh, look at that sue griffey featured so in the left navigation can you click on that it's not enabled yet so i'm going to go to my page oh. after we're done here and we'll, we'll take a look at that okay good to know we just found something all right let's go into the about under the about section click on overview it's oh, you know not... what? Click on click on save. Maybe that's why it's not letting oh, us click on got save because we did change something. Okay, now click on featured. Sue Griffey, look at this. Do you see it? Yeah. Are you seeing Sue? Do you see it on your page too? Are you looking? Are you following along on your page uh, right now or no? Let me. I'm gonna. I will go there and check okay. and see. And everyone else too, if you're following along on your page, go into your page edit and see if you have this on your page too. Because if we all have it then I would probably say they've rolled it out to all page admins. We'll come back to that in just a minute. We're going to go back to Stacy now. 
I'm okay, looking so at and it's not online. I not on yours? Uh -huh. Okay. So it's rolling out. It's a gradual rollout. But Stacy has it, which is ironic because Stacy just started her page. It's not even active yet. Zero followers. And they're giving her the ability to feature posts. How crazy is LinkedIn? All right. Anyways, Give me a leg um, up, maybe. I know. Maybe they're trying to like reward page early pages. Okay. So Stacy, underneath about, I want you to click on overview. And so you got a couple sections to fill out in here. You've got either description section. I'll let you know that LinkedIn has given you 2,000 characters in total. You're using 936 of them right now. So what I want you to think about is your company page on LinkedIn is like a mini version of your website, okay? And the goal would be to get people to click to come over to your website, but you need to give them enough of a reason to do so. So what I like to do, and I'm an opportunistic marketer. And when I say that, I mean, like, if LinkedIn gives me a box, I'm going to fill in the box. If they say you can put 2,000 characters in the box, I'm going to try to get as close to 2,000 as I can. But I want to write that about section in a way that um, thinks about human behavior. So most people only read the top, and then they read less as they go down. And if you make it easier for me to read and skim, I'll probably read and skim. So if you can do short paragraphs, bulleted lists, Maybe even replace some of the bullets with emojis to add a little pop of color in there. You know, green check marks, things that are appropriate for LinkedIn, stuff like that. But then describing the products and services that you offer in a way that if I'm reading through, it's almost like if I go up to McDonald's and I read the menu board, what sounds good? What am I looking for? You know, like I know what's on the menu that you have to offer. That might compel me to click to go over to your website. Okay, so I would say if you if you have more to put in there, you've got, you know, okay. you've only got use about half of the character count. You could expand upon that if you'd like. Okay. Okay. All right. So underneath that is the website URL. Now, this is the website homepage URL, which is perfectly fine, whereas the button that we're going to replace at the top is going to be contact us, and we'll look at the public page in a second. So we can have two linked on your profile for your page. Okay. The rest of the stuff is just organization information. If you could scroll down in here, I think everything else looks good. Industry, company oh. size, company type, phone number. If you would like to list it, this will be public. If you're self-employed and it's your cell phone number, you don't want to list it. That's okay. If you're using a Google voice or a company phone number, um, you can list that in there. Year founded, um, you know, put your year founded in there and don't overthink this. You don't have to say, well, that's not the date I created the LLC or, you know, just put it in there, whatever the date was that you started um, doing business and keeping in mind, this is not a required field, but I think it can be helpful because it shows people like how long have you been doing this business? Now, underneath that, it says specialties up to 20. So, you know, Stacey, on our personal profile, how we can list skills and we can have up right. to 50. I want right. you to think about specialties as being like a list of the products and services that you offer. If somebody were to type in, like for me, LinkedIn coaching, that would be one of my specialties. Or maybe marketing strategy, that would be one of my specialties. Now, you can list up to 20. So you'll type in one, then click on the plus bar, and then click on the next one. What I would do is think about the categories of products and services that you offer. Use the language that your target audience, that your customers and clients would use. Don't get fancy on this. Don't use your own terminology. Use what they would use for that. Um, and also, here's a little um, research tip I'm going to call. Not a hack. I don't like to call it hack. A research tip for you. Look up other companies that are similar to yours on LinkedIn either actual or aspirational competitors and look and see in their about section what their specialties are. Now, let's say keynote speaking is one of the areas that you offer. Now, that person does not own the category of keynote speaking. A lot of people do keynote speaking. So I don't feel like it's it's plagiarizing necessarily. It's gaining inspiration from your competitors right. is right. what I'm looking at. Okay. So- yeah. Still out, if you can get 20, um, that does help your business page to come up in searches on LinkedIn. You don't have to list 20, but again, opportunistic marketer in me is saying if they give you 20 boxes, use the 20 boxes in there, okay? All right, click on save if you could. And then the next thing is under workplace commitments, um, if you're using LinkedIn pretty heavily for talent recruitment, I would fill out both of those areas. If not, if you're self-employed, I would say skip them for now, um, unless okay. it's really important to you. Click on locations, the next box there. Um, locations now, what I do is exactly what you do. I'm guessing, Stacy, that you work out of your home office. Is that fair to say? So yep. 
you don't have to add a physical street location. You can say, um, you can say my location doesn't have a physical location, but you put in the zip code that you're located in and then location type. I did exactly what you, you did headquarters. I think I actually just to play on it. I think I said world headquarters for Meller marketing, you know, I just to be fun. Cause you can do that when you're self-employed. Um, right. if you have, if you do have, oh, go ahead. No, I was just, I was agreeing with you. Yeah. Okay. If you do have multiple locations or satellite offices, you can certainly list those in there. And then continuing down lead gen form, I'm going to recommend that you skip that. I'm not seeing a lot of results. I've not heard one person who's gotten anything really great out of that. Um, my guess is they're going to retire that feature eventually, but for now it's still open. And then community where it says hashtags, click on hashtags and you can add up the three hashtags that are relevant to your page and that people might be using to find you and your company page. So I typically will tell you like one of them, I would say use the company page name as a hashtag. So hashtag talent impact advisory. Let's use that as one of them. And then, and the reason I do that, to be honest, because some people don't know the difference between tagging and mentioning. Oh. Um or, or hashtags and mentioning, I should say. A hashtag is when you use the pound symbol. Um, a mention is when you use the at symbol. And periodically, right. I will, yeah, periodically I will look up hashtag Brenda Meller or hashtag Meller Marketing because some people think that they are tagging me in and they're doing it the wrong way. So this just helps me to quickly find mentions of that. And then you can add in two other industry hashtags or broader hat, like maybe it says leadership coaching or leadership consulting or talent recruitment or, or whatever that is. Um, what will happen here is two things. One is once we get these loaded, you can see on your page, you can click on them to see posts that are using these hashtags and then you can reply as the page. LinkedIn will also periodically serve up to you mentions of hashtag leadership coaching and it will say you should reply as your company page to get into the conversation about these mm. things so okay. you, can, you can change these out to stacy like over time you might say gosh leadership coaching is really not what i want it should be hashtag leadership or leadership coaching best practices or something else inside there um and you can change these out as regularly as you, as you want the only people who can see the hashtags are your page admins so these aren't visible on your okay. profile Okay. So click on save. Wait, quick question. So like for leadership coaching is, you know, I'm thinking about leadership coaching or leadership development. Mm -hmm. They're, they're kind of, you know, in the same category, but are you selecting a hashtag according to what I think others will be looking for? That's, that's yes. my driver, not what well, I. Um, it's really what others are using in their posts because Using the yeah. hashtag in here will allow you to click to find posts that are using that hashtag, and then you can reply as the page. Ah, okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's helping on the back end of your page with SEO necessarily. I, I kind of don't think it is because of the functionality is really driven to reply as the page, and it doesn't sit on the page publicly at all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Click on save. And while we're going through, Christopher, I saw that you raised your hand. Did you have a question related to something that we were covering here or a different question? We figured it out. You figured it out. Okay. That's what I'd like to hear. All right. So let's close out of here, Stacey. And next thing, let's, um, by the way, anytime you do page edits, LinkedIn's going to say, hey, you should do a post on LinkedIn to share what you just did. This yeah. message is independent of if you ever have posted on your page. So if you just posted and then you got this message, it doesn't know that. I usually just close out of here, you know, and, and just skip and we'll come back to that later. The other thing I want to do before we look in your public page is in the upper left-hand corner, you've got that um, header graphic for your page and there's a gray pencil yeah. icon. So yeah. I would I would highly recommend uploading a graphic. If you click on that pencil icon, I think it'll tell you the dimensions. I believe it's 1128 by 191. Yes, I'm a LinkedIn geek and I know dimensions of cover images. <laughs> I would recommend you create that in Canva, um, keeping in mind similar to your profile, your avatar slash logo is gonna be in the lower right-hand corner. And I usually tell people don't put your avatar or rather your logo in the page header because it's then it's like the Department of Redundancy Department. Your logo is in two yeah. places. Yeah. Um, OK, so now that you've got everything kind of set up in there or at least, you know, where to go to finish it. 
can you click on yes. view as member? So underneath the create button, click on view as member. Now we are going to see what other people see when they come to your page, okay? So all the information that you've filled out, it will be located underneath the about section. So if you can click on the about section, Stacey, and you're gonna see all the overview information, the website, the phone number, here's the specialties at the bottom. So again, if you wanted to do some competitive research, you could look up other people who are similar to yours. By the way, um, if you can't think of competitors, sometimes LinkedIn will offer you in the right side of your page, it says people also follow. Now, mm -hmm. right now, Stacy, this is telling me LinkedIn has no idea who you are and what your business is about because they're offering up Dow and BASF and Lyondell. Did you used to work in, in the chemical industry? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So LinkedIn, LinkedIn's kind of guessing. They're like, I don't know, maybe. Dow? How about Dow? <laughs> but um, you can actually look up your competitors and let's go back up to the top of your page and let's click on view as admin. So in that blue bar at the top, you see where it says view as admin in the upper right hand corner. Oh, there we go. There you go. And you'll have to get comfortable because view as member is on the left and view as admin is on the right. Um, let's go under analytics. So in this left side menu where it says feed activity analytics, let's click on analytics. And in the top menu bar, see where it says analytics and then it says visitors, followers, leads, content, competitors. Click on competitors. Okay. So some pages I've noticed that LinkedIn automatically yeah. populates it with random names. Other times I'm seeing exactly what you're saying, Stacey, like nothing is located in here. If I were you, what I would do is um, you can add up to nine pages in total. So there'll be 10 pages, including your own. So what I would do just, just, for, just for giggles, Stacey, I'm going to ask those that are on the call to drop the name of their company in the comments. And let's look up the others on the call. So put in my page name, which is Meller Marketing. And then I know Christopher's page name, so I'll tell you his next. So Meller Marketing. Okay, click on that. And you can change these later, okay? In search by page name, type in Calm Clear Communications. Okay, let me see who is inside the chat here. Um, Mindy's page is called, there you go. Mindy's is AIM Resource Group. Thank you, Mindy. Okay, and then Linda's is LSB oh. Consulting. By the way, Linda, congratulations on your business. Awesome. Okay, did I miss anybody? Did anybody else drop their name in? Unmute yourself if you have a business name. I'm having a hard time navigating chat here. This one? Oh. Who's that? Was that Sue? No, Becky, but I like have she's... one. It's um, Sue Mentors should be the okay. business page. Sue Mentors, is that two words or one, one word? One word. Sue Mentors, all one word. Dean's company yes, name yeah. is South Windsor JSWT. Did I get that right, Dean? I'm reading the link. Oh, we're not finding it. South Windsor, two words. There it is. Okay. All right. Just for the purposes of what we're doing right now here, let's just go ahead and click on continue. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. And can you click on the at the top of your messaging, click on the white space next to the word messaging, that messaging pop up so we can get that menu to collapse down, Stacey. So on the oh, right hand side of your page, sorry, click yeah. in the white. That's OK. Just click in the white area or the down arrow. There you go. OK, so now what we're going to see in here is LinkedIn is, is evaluating us against competitors. I'm using fingers as air quotes when I say this, because these are really any companies you can compare yourself against. First thing is it's showing you a time frame of the past 30 days. So see where it says October 17th through November 15th. Click on that date drop down and let's change this to the last 365 days. So instead of just comparing ourselves to these other companies in the past month, let's look at the past year. Okay, so here's what it's telling us for all of these pages and scroll down just a little bit so you can see all of them that are in the list here. So you got eight total. So of all of these pages, um, it's putting these in, is it putting it in rank order by, I think it is by total number of followers. So at the top of the list is my page, Meller Marketing with 8,349 followers. And you see, as we go down, these are the total number of the followers that each of these pages has as of today, okay? New followers is how many followers has the page gained in the past 365 days because of the time frame that we chose at the top. Now, if you chose six months, it would say new followers 
the number would be reflective of the past six months instead. So the way I use this data and I have my clients use this data is you can start to track yourself against your competitors and you can do it on a, on a net number or instead what I do is on a, a percentage increase basis because then you level the playing field because you really can't compete against somebody who's got 8,000 followers if you're just getting started and that's going to make you feel not great about yourself. But let's say Meller Marketing, and I'm not good with the maths guys, so let's just say I had a a 5% increase. I have no idea if that's right, but let's say I had a 5% increase in followers over the past year and Sue Mentors, now I can do the math on this one. Sue Mentors has had like a, you know, probably what 60% increase. So if I were to evaluate total followers, I might think, well, gosh, I'm not doing that great. But if I were to be evaluating myself against Sue and I was Sue's page, I'd be like, man, I'm knocking it out of the park. Because if Sue sustains that level of follower growth over time, she's going to pass me someday. And more importantly, it's just showing that she's got really strong growth with her page. Does that make sense to you, Stacey? Yes. Okay. So this is total followers at the top. Scroll down and there's another chart underneath this at the bottom. And now we're looking at content metrics. And if you click on the little question mark, hover over that little question mark next to organic content metrics, it's, LinkedIn's a little bit vague on their descriptions, but let me just read this on screen. Um, organic content metrics for a page's updates. Time range filter applies to the dates when updates were created. All dates and times are in UTC. I have no idea what that means. All right, so this is saying ranked by total engagements. And there's no other question mark in here that's explaining what exactly this is. I did look it up at one point. And if you go to help.linkedin.com, LinkedIn defines what this is. But basically, um, it is all of the interactions that have occurred on the page is my understanding at a high level. I believe it includes both likes, reactions, comments, replies, all those types of things. Okay, so here's what I'm looking at. In the past year, because the time frame we checked at the beginning applies to this organic content, content metric section. In the past year, Meller Marketing has had 1,600 total engagements. Okay, in that same time frame of of year, I've posted 303 times. So that shows you I'm posting about once every day. You know. Some days I probably do more than one. Some days I probably skip, but on average, I'm 303. Now, in comparison, when we go down the page on here, you can see Sue Mentors has had a total of 263 engagements and has posted 11 times. AIM Resource Group, 207 engagements, 23 posts in the past year. Now, you can probably see a correlation between the total times a page has posted and the total number of engagements. Now, it's not just posting that's going to be driving engagement. It's also, what does the post say? Are you inviting people in? Are you inviting people to like and comment and react? And are you doing polls, which were, which kind of embed engagement as a part? There's a lot of factors that are concerned with that. But it does help you to do a quick assessment compared to others that are in your category. The other thing I teach my clients to do with this data is I look at the math on this. So if I were to say... Um, 1,600 total engagements divided by, or maybe the math is the other way, divided by the number of posts. It's like number of engagements per post on average. Okay, so I can create a benchmark to measure myself against myself, and then I can use that benchmark going forward to start to evaluate my page progress and my engagement progress. Does that make sense to you, Stacey, and, and any questions yeah. or thoughts on that? No, well, makes perfect sense. I, what does it looks like you can click on these numbers yeah, try click on it what happens when you click on it i'm guessing it takes you to the oh okay page this is new i don't remember seeing this before i love doing this stuff i'm like oh that's new total page engagement breakdown so 80 total reactions 144 comments 39 shares so I'm not good with the math, but nine plus four would be ending a number in three. So I think the total engagements is a total score. Um, it is, and I, I'm trying to remember, I think unduplicated, I believe is the terminology, which means if I both reacted and commented and shared, it would count each of those three actions as an engagement. Does that sound right? I think I got the terminology. Okay, I see a couple heads nodding. <laughs> I'm like coming back to my marketing research days at this point when I'm talking about this stuff. But yeah, now it's showing you the breakdown. So if you wanted to, you certainly could spend some time. Can you click on Meller Marketing and look at the 1629 and how does that break down? Um, that looks like that looks like 
So Sue had more comments and I have more reactions on mine. You seeing that? Yeah. Yeah. So very cool. And so you go ahead. No, and isn't it true? Is it true in, in LinkedIn that they're more interested in conversation than reactions? So what you're going for is more comments and shares and things like that, right? Yeah. Yes, there are reactions. So the answer to that is actually it's 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 a little bit different when it comes to company pages. And okay. I want you to think about this, Stacey. Um, close out of the stat right now and click on your LinkedIn in symbol or the home symbol. So I, I want to illustrate this up on screen as I'm talking about this. So when you go to the LinkedIn homepage, which is where most of us spend spend time, you know, we're scrolling through the page. So you see personal posts and here, scroll down in the activity feed until you see a page post. So usually it's the second one right there and it says promoted, which means they are paying for LinkedIn ad space to be in your homepage fade. Okay. So keep scrolling down and then under that, you see another personal post, another personal post, keep going until you see another page post, not a repost or a reshare, but a page post. You Demi, that's promoted. Okay. Yeah. So they got into your homepage because they paid for it. Keep going. You see what you're noticing here? Personal posts. You're not seeing page posts in the homepage feed. So right. to answer your question, what does LinkedIn prefer? I want you to think about LinkedIn as a business. Their goal is to keep you on the site longer because the longer you can stay on, the more ads they can serve you, the more engagement that they are creating with more engaging posts is going to keep you on the site longer. Um, there is somewhat of a point system that occurs inside the algorithm for homepage feed posts. And a lot of us LinkedIn trainers and coaches have kind of put our heads together and figured this out. It seems that reactions and likes are worth like one point. Comments are worth um, about five points, especially if they're eight or more words, longer comments. Comments which create a reply, and I don't know what the point system is there, but maybe it's seven points because it's creating some conversations in there. It's keeping people coming back to the post, reading it longer, engaging with it longer. Now, in comparison, your company page posts, um, your company page is really a destination. Most people that see the page posts are coming to the page and visiting the page. Now, when you get to the company page, um, and by the way, can you go under your me icon at the top, Stacey, that's the fastest way to get back to your company page from here. So go under manage and click on company talent impact advisory. And we're almost at time, so we'll wrap up after this. But when you come back to your company page, I want you to click on view as member because that's what would, uh, the public would see if they're viewing your page. Click on posts to get to the activity feed section of the page. And if I come to your page, the only thing I'm seeing on here are posts that are made by the page. Whereas the public LinkedIn homepage feed is posts made by people and sponsored posts and more posts by people. And your attention span is like moving in a million different directions. Whereas on here, you've got a captive audience. It's a very concentrated feed. So um, the answer to your question is really more related to personal posts on LinkedIn on the whole. Right. Sometimes you will start to see company page posts coming into the homepage feed, especially for people that are shared connections that are also interacting with that page on a regular basis and for pages that are very active and very um, and, and, and getting a lot of engagement, comments and likes and reactions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right, Stacey. Well, thank you for letting us demonstrate that. You got a little bit of homework to work on, but I hope I that these tips have helped you. Thanks so much. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. So I thought I saw a hand raised. Was it Mindy? Did you raise your hand? How are you doing, Mindy? I'm good. I was just, because I don't really focus on posting for my company page, and I just mm -hmm. really focus more and more on my own page. page. Yeah. But you answered my question. Yeah, those numbers are interesting for the page, but if I don't focus on the page, mm -hmm. uh, it's not really relevant. And there are no numbers like that for our personal pages, right? Um, you cannot compare yourself using LinkedIn analytics to your competitors, if that's what you're asking. Now, a while back, do you remember the LinkedIn rockstar list I used to do? Mm -hmm. um, so I would track in an Excel file myself and I would track um, followers for some of my competitors or my co-opetition and track progress over time on that. Um, there, you know, there are tools like um, I use Shield Analytics that you can track your own data, but it does not, I don't believe, track other individuals' data and it is a paid subscription for that. 
so going back to your question, well, what does it matter if I'm not doing a lot of posting on my company page? Um, you know, what's the value of that? It, you know, it's just, it's interesting data. You can compare yourself against your competitors. My recommendation to all of you is that if you want to get more results out of your company page and you want your company page to start generating leads for you, then you have to put effort and attention on your company page. So at bare minimum, I would encourage you to do is post, um, once a month is the absolute minimum I would do in posting on your companies. Once a month is the minimum. Even better would be like once a week. If you're already posting on a regular basis on your company page, and maybe you're posting three to five, maybe you're posting every single day right now, but your posts are getting zero engagement, I would say reduce your frequency to once a week until every single one of those posts is getting some level of engagement and then start e increasing the frequency. The goal there being, let's just not post for posting sake, but let's make sure that we are posting information that people see as valuable content that's gonna prompt them to click on like or react or adding a comment to it. Um, that's my recommendation for you. So once a, once a month, absolute minimum, even better would be once a week. But the goal is that you're sharing information on your company page that would be relevant and seen as useful and helpful for your ideal target audience. That's going to help to increase your engagement scores and your overall results there. Does that help, and Mindy, with, with what you're asking? Absolutely. Thanks, Brad. Okay. All right. Uh, Aoife, we'll end with your question, and then we'll wrap up for today. I know we're at time. Just very quickly, I thought I'd let you know. Um, I do have the featured activity. I went and had another look at my page. Oh, you yeah. actually have to go into edit page. And yes. then on the left-hand side and under home, you'd see it. Um, so you okay. don't see it by checking your own post. It's nowhere near as good as the featured activity section on a personal profile because all it's letting you do is feature posts that you've already posted. So you can add links or media or anything like that. Okay, so let me click on edit and then it was under, I'm not seeing it on mine. So you haven't got it. So it would appear, mm. um, yeah, it would appear on the left-hand side. I'm seeing a home. Did you, did you enable it on your page yet? Did you pardon? feature a post? Have you? Um, yes, yes, I've just gone in and featured two posts. To okay, so let's, let's look so it's on at my company page, yeah. The Babushka Social? Yeah. Okay, let me click on that. And then I click on posts. So what 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 am I looking for here? I think you'd need to go to home because by clicking on posts, you're just home? going to see the posts. I would imagine it would appear when you're in the home view. Okay, let's look at this page. Yeah, posts. there you go. Is it these? No, but that doesn't look any different. No, it's not. Um, hang on. No, no, they weren't the two that I featured. Hmm. I'm just going to go in and check what I see my end. Okay. Um, now, the good thing is this came up early in the conversation today. Sue brought to our attention that Michelle J. Raymond and Lanier Johnson were talking about featured posts being now available on company pages. We couldn't figure it out. And then as we were going through Stacy's page, which is a new page that she's just getting set up, we saw in her page editing tool featured inside of there. Um, now, I went into my company page. It was a very well-established page. I've been running it for years, and I don't have it yet. So I'm not... Um, I'm not a part of the rollout yet, but then Eva said that she has it on her page and you said that you did enable some featured right. posts on your so page. So I'll tell you how I'm seeing it. If you go to home on my company page, mm -hmm. scroll down underneath where it says get results from social media, you'll see featured. Nope. So that's I wonder true. if it's a, if you have it, you see it. Sometimes that's the way that LinkedIn rolls out oh, changes. So possibly, if you have, yeah to the feature, you'll see it. That might be because they're testing results in a small um, yeah. test group. Because I've gone be. in, I've gone in in member mode, and I'm seeing so seeing at home. I'm seeing the about section. Yeah. Then I see featured. Okay. And then you see your page post. So the it doesn't look great because, as you showed earlier in the call, when you go in and see page posts, you're seeing a couple of posts there anyway. So the feature. Yeah doesn't look any different than that. The only difference is it says featured instead of page posts. 
Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, well, stay <laughs> tuned on I it. think I they need start... to do a little bit of refining work on that feature. Yeah, and like I said, they've got five waves. It sounds like you might be in wave one or maybe you're in wave. We have no idea what wave they're in right now, but it sounds like these things are coming. So I'll just ask all of you to keep on the lookout for that. And feel free, if you're seeing some new features, you can always grab, you know, if you want to grab a screen capture and share it with me or do it as a LinkedIn post and, and you know, put a picture of what you're seeing, invite your network to comment on it. It's also a really great way of, bringing people back to your company page, even if you don't specialize in social media for a living, but especially in, in Etha's case, if you do specialize in social media, it's a really great way of sharing your expertise and bringing to light these new features. Yeah. All yeah. right, guys, we're a little bit over on time, so I'm going to start to wrap us up for today, but I want to, again, thank Christopher Johnson for being just such an awesome co-host and helping to facilitate the introductions on the beginning of the call. I'll remind you that these company pages, uh, company page office hours are the third Monday, third Friday, I'm getting my days confused, the third Friday of every month from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, at this time, I'm trying to figure out what to do with these calls in 2024. I am committed to doing the calls through the end of December and then trying to figure out what to do at that point. But at this point, we will still be doing one more call in the month of December and then stay tuned for details going into 2024. With that said, reminder that you can download the chat before you leave here today. And if you notice inside chat, I put the YouTube link. We also have a YouTube playlist with prior company page calls. And really cool thing, we're now starting to convert these company page office hours onto my podcast, which is called Enthusiastically Self-Employed. And our call from, I believe it was two months ago, uh, was published this Monday on my podcast. So you can certainly listen into those if you prefer listening to your content instead of viewing it on video. With all that said, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy. And I look forward to seeing all of you on LinkedIn. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.